Hey guys, I don't know what it is, but I feel absolutely exhausted today. Like someone's been beating the crap out of me, and I just don't have it in me to make a normal video. But I didn't want to leave you guys with nothing today, so I came up with this little idea. I was planning on doing a series of shorts for the last week of October recommending movies to watch for Halloween. But rather than do that, why don't I just compile them into one big video and post it now? So you have a little more time to watch your way through them if you want to get around to all of them. It's not my normal content for sure, but I hope at least some of you will enjoy this, and some of you will get some ideas on things that you may not have seen before. First up, let's do the only couple family-friendly things I'm going to have on this list. The ones that maybe you could watch without either crapping yourself or feeling weird about watching them with others. Though, that doesn't mean that there won't be some level of nudity in these. Charles Band's Ghost Town. This one is not really scary at all, unless the person watching is a really little kid. This one's about a police officer who's a competition shooter going to a ghost town to locate a kidnapped woman. The ghosts of the town can be killed, but they always get back up in a few minutes to an hour or two. So, shooting them really only slows them down. It's a very interesting and fun one, as the ghosts aren't much like ghosts, or much like anything I've ever seen before. They are both mortal and immortal, and it makes for a fun time that's perfect for Halloween. Then you got Highway to Hell, not the song, a movie starring Rob Lowe's brother. And that's the level of notoriety that Rob Lowe's brother deserves, because who is he other than the brother of Rob Lowe? Though I'm not trying to disparage his acting in this, it's good, and this is one of my favorite movies. Again, not really scary, the most NSFW thing about this is that there's a scene with a naked demon lady who's actually just a guy in a very convincing costume. But this is a great movie. The plot is that while trying to elope, Rob Lowe's brother's fiancé is kidnapped on a magical stretch of road that leads to hell, which is an absolutely fascinating location based on this movie's interpretation. Basically a desert full of weirdos, and Rob Lowe's brother must rescue her. It's a very funny movie with a ton of great visual gags and a lot of surprising cameos from people you don't expect to see and people who weren't even famous yet. This one also perfectly encapsulates the spirit of the season. Just be ready for it being a weird movie. And not like in an off-putting way, just like not quite anything else you've ever watched kind of way. Tremors. If you've never seen this one or heard of it, it is both kind of a terrifying concept and has one to two really scary moments, especially for kids. But I'd still rate this one as for kids. I mean, it better be, I've been watching this since I was like five. It's a movie about worms that burrow under the ground and eat people. It's a horror comedy starring everyone's favorite actor, Kevin Bacon. As silly as it all sounds, believe me when I say that it's just an excellent movie. Well worth your time if you haven't seen it. And if you have, let's just say that I've never met the person who's seen Tremors and has even one bad word to say about it. Now that's pretty much everything that I have that you could call safe for kids. From here on out, get ready for the gross and the truly scary stuff. Let's start off with one that's just a stone-cold classic. John Carpenter's The Thing. Emphasis on cold. I expect that most of you that actually care about this list have already either seen this movie or know what it's about, but it's still worth trying to get anyone not in the know to check it out. This is a movie about what can be best described as an alien virus who infects people, consumes them from the inside out, and pretends to be them until it can isolate someone else and infect them too, usually by having its internal organs rip out of its body and tear its victim to pieces. This is one of the progenitors and kings of the body horror genre, so only watch this if you got a strong stomach. But despite that, the movie is far more about creeping dread and paranoia, and this is one of those quintessential movies where everyone does everything right to try and survive, and it's not really their fault that stuff is still going wrong. One of John Carpenter's best. It has its flaws, but boy, if you get to the heart attack scene and don't have one of your own, you might just be a thing yourself. Speaking of John Carpenter, John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness. I know this one has a pretty divided reputation, but personally, I love it. If you like Lovecraftian themes and concepts, this should be right up your alley. In this one, a private detective is hired to find an author who's a stand-in for Stephen King, who stopped communicating with his publisher when he visited a town on the East Coast. And the publisher has become impatient for his new book, as it seems his fans have become something of a dangerous cult, causing riots across the country since they haven't gotten the new book yet. After getting to the town, the private detective finds that there is nothing right about the place. This is a solid movie in my book. I can see how the ending would frustrate people, though not in the typical way. It doesn't get to the end and say it was all a dream or it was all fake, and it didn't kill off all the characters, but it is just different enough that I can see why people wouldn't be happy with it. Among these last bunch of movies, this is probably the closest to kid-friendly. There are fewer horrific scenes of violence in this one, though it does still have a few. A good one if you want a more melancholy movie for this Halloween. From Beyond, another Lovecraftian story, this time actually based on Lovecraft. And when I say actually based on Lovecraft, I mean the first five minutes are based on a Lovecraft book, and the remaining hour and a half are all completely invented by the filmmakers. Of all the movies I'm talking about in this video, this is the most NSFK. This is not safe for kids. There is sex, there is gore, there is horrible body horror monsters, and there is a lot of all three. The plot of this one is as follows. A scientist invents a machine that allows everyone within its vicinity to see any dimensions that overlap with ours. However, if it can be observed, then it can observe us back. So horrible nightmares start coming through into our dimension. Cue horribly gory horror movie. Me and my brother discovered this one two years ago, and we both just sat in awe by the end, pondering how we'd never heard of it before then. One of the best gems we've run into from that era of film. Then there's Dario Argento's Demons. I'm not usually one for the Italian giallo-type horror movies where nothing makes sense and the plot doesn't matter, but fortunately, this isn't one of those. No, for once, this is a movie that actually makes sense. I mean, it still plays like a bad dream, but it's an incredibly consistent dream with a strong through line of logic that you can follow. The plot on this one is dead simple. It's about a movie theater full of people where demons are spreading throughout the crowd like a zombie virus. 
Unlike zombies, though, the demons can warp reality to make it so you can't escape. This is a great one to throw on in the background of a party because you cannot pay attention to it and get just about the same amount out of it. And there's almost always something on screen worth watching, even if you only catch it in bits and pieces. Next up, Dead Alive, or brain damage depending on what country you're from, is no joke the director of The Lord of the Rings, Peter Jackson's first or maybe it was second movie. This one is one of the most insane, whacked out, crazy zombie movies of all time, where the zombies both spread through bite and are completely immortal, and every part of them is alive. If you cut a zombie in half, you now have zombie legs, zombie torso, and whatever falls out of them is a zombie as well. You have only made them more dangerous. The movie has everything you could want for a Halloween movie, from kung fu to the literal world record for most fake blood ever in any movie. It's funny, it's violent, it's weird, it's like a comic book on acid, and it's a great one to watch for Halloween. Next up is the most understated movie I'm going to be recommending, but that's not saying much given this list. The Autopsy of Jane Doe. I don't know how much about this one I can say before it's too much, so let me try this. It's a movie about an autopsy being done on a body that was dug up from the basement of a house where there was a mass murder-suicide, and no one tried to break in. Everyone was trying to get out. Now this next part might be spoilers, so skip ahead to the timecode on your screen if you don't want to risk any level of knowledge about the movie going in. I'll wait for a few seconds in case you're away from your screens so you can reach them and skip it. I'm also going to try to remember to include a timestamp that will let you skip to the section in question in the comments. So for spoilers, as the movie progresses, it becomes clear that the body is possessed by some kind of great evil, and it wants the surgeons and anyone around it dead, and it has the ability to raise the undead to achieve those goals. Short spoilers, but every movie is only getting like a minute to explain. This one is more of a slow burn than the rest of the movies I've suggested here. For the first half, it's really mostly an engrossing procedural about an autopsy with characters who have great chemistry. Spooky, but quiet, for the most part. Lastly, I recommend to you The Void. I had the completely wrong impression as to what this movie was going to be before I watched it for the first time a couple years ago. I thought this whole thing was going to be a quiet character study where people were going to be near a portal to another dimension and there would be subtle reality changes and time shifts driving people insane. That is not remotely at all what I got with this. The best way I can describe this movie is that it is John Carpenter's The Thing mixed with John Carpenter's The Prince of Darkness mixed with John Carpenter's Assault on Precinct 13 with a heavy dose of Lovecraft on top. I don't know if they were aiming to write the biggest love letter to John Carpenter's movies of all time, but that's what they did. This movie is gory, violent, and it does not suffer from those subtleties I expected going in. Honestly, if I had to say which one of these movies is more gory between this and The Thing, I'd actually have to say it's this. It's a movie about a bunch of people trapped inside of a hospital currently being decommissioned due to fire damage by a murder cult on the outside, while there are monsters appearing out of nowhere from within the building, and all the while they are losing their minds to insanity and hallucinations. Of all the films I've seen since me and my brothers started the tradition of watching horror movies we've never heard of all throughout October, this one has been by far both of ours favorite surprise. I mean, to be fair, a lot of the time when you're watching a horror movie that you've never heard of, or at least heard of and then wrote down on a list of movies to watch next October, there are good reasons as to why you've never heard of them, because they usually kind of suck. This one absolutely rules. We were both thrilled to have found this, even more so than From Beyond, which we saw the same year, come to think about it. That was a really good year for us. Anyways, that's not half of what I have to say. Like, seriously, I could recommend more, but as I said, I'm trying to rest, and I've already given you more movies than there are days left in the month, and this video is already as long as a normal video of mine. So, it's enough of what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And, if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.